The Magic School Bus. It was an educational kids show back in the 90s with a fun science teacher taking her students on adventures into space and even the human digestive system. But what most people don't know about the show was that it was meant to be scary and frightening for kids before the concept got completely out of hand, most likely terrifying audiences. Originally planned by PBS, it was designed by Melnitsa Animation Studio in Russia, and thus the original plot episode was partially animated in Russia before chopped at the five minute stamp to be a kid's show. In the original episode, the doubting school students would get onto a school bus. Initially, the bus had no eyes that changed into a spacecraft and took them into space. But this is when strange things would happen. The recut includes the original PBS episode one, but the music is changed with an infinitely descending shepherd's tone replacing the happy intro. The title screen is simply black with odd lettering that translated into the sad bus. After some research, I found out that it said, I cannot breathe. I only saw the episode in a recut by a friend in Russia who had VHS taped it and sent it to me with an explicit note that I do not share it due to legal disclosures. The bus also looks much more sinister. The front lights look normal, yet they were eyes, and the front of the bus looks extremely sad. The voice acting is also changed with the sense of bleakness in the American voices. In the PBS edition, Arnold's cousin Janet thinks that Mrs. Frizzle is boring, so Arnold has the teacher take them into space. In this episode, going into space is when things become quite messed up. Nothing from the original episode is found, instead the bus transformed into a spaceship kind of like one you see in a film like 2001, A Space Odyssey. The walls appear all white, with an infinite amount of hallways and steep drops. From the outside, it looks like a Soviet space rocket, but two times as big. Mrs. Frizzle says that there's an override lock on the ship, and nobody can leave until it finishes its destination. We are shooting into the sun, she says. Mrs. Frizzle tells the students that she can either shut off the airlock and suffocate everyone, but only jokingly. She says that she'll put in the manual override, but it will take six months to get back home. She suggests that they all go into a stasis sleep. A cancerous lump has developed on Mrs. Frizzle's face, but no one makes any mention of it. There's an issue on the amount of bed for the stasis, with 11 students and only 9 beds. Mrs. Frizzle tells them that she'll be fine staying up for the six months, but one student will have to stay up as well. Ralphie suggests that they draw straws. They do so, and Arnold is determined to be the one who stays up. Now up to this point, the episode was getting strange. Mrs. Frizzle tells Arnold that there were 30 students in the class, but 20 of them died. And the time frame for going back home isn't six months, but actually two years. She leaves and locks the door from the outside. You can only tell the time is progressing because Arnold is proceeding to grow more unkempt and nervous. The nine beds line the walls along with the control panel that is deactivated. The food that was left sits on one of the rooms. He attempts to ration it, but there's only enough for what seems to be a month. He also has no means of a bathroom, so he urinates and defecates on the floor. After about two minutes, two months have passed, and Arnold is looking noticeably fatigued. More than he's ever been. Ralphie's catchphrase, I think I'm going to be sick, begins to play repetitively over the music. I think it was meant to reflect Arnold's mind, but then Mrs. Frizzle begins to talk. You're hungry, aren't you? She asks. Arnold now realizes the predicament he faces. He won't make it two years in this ship, and if he tries to kill himself by smashing a window, he'll kill all the students as well. You didn't leave me enough food, Arnold yells out loud. Oh, but Arnold, I did. The animation does a long, slow pan across the room to what looks like a stylization of a wide-angle lens pointing out to the beds. And then the voice changes. I am your nervous system. This is no hallucination, Arnold. 
I am you. The strangest and most convincing thing about the animation of the original episode is that Arnold looks similar to Mrs. Frizzle. One would think they'd be related. They both have pale skin, orange hair, even mannerisms, aside from Mrs. Frizzle's greater achieved sense of confidence, have their similarities. The voice began to whisper, eat them. Arnold had attempted to analyze the space overlays over the defunct control panel for some time, but only now, realizing that he was intentionally trapped here, did it now make sense. The path wasn't leading back home. Through whatever means, the rooms had also become increasingly hot. The unclean environment was causing him to develop sores as he slept on his side in a mat until taking Carlos from his bed so he could sleep there at night. That was when he made the realization that none of them had been breathing. Mrs. Frizzle hadn't put them into stasis, she euthanized them. It was only after he made the realization that a scalpel showed up at the door. Someone had opened it while he was sleeping and moved the bodies. The need to eat was more apparent now than ever. He looked at Phoebe. He secretly despised her. This became all the more apparent as he took the scalpel and slowly cut into Phoebe's belly. He was not at all hesitant now. The scene is the most disturbing because the angle doesn't change. His expression is angry, with animated stylized eyebrows. For 60 seconds he slices her open, eats the lungs and the intestines, peels and eats Phoebe's skin, and moves on to the face, slicing off the eyebrows and nose, leaving a shaved skeletal corpse of Phoebe as the film time lapses. The animation is different, it's more specific, more layered, and medical looking. Now the cancerous sores are visibly on Arnold's face as well. The next day the scalpel is removed, for the next month, he picks on the remains of Phoebe. The next time lapse is messed up, because now, it seems Arnold has begun to hit puberty. He nibbled on the ears and hands of every student except Janet, because it's his cousin. Arnold talks to himself frantically. He picks up the scalpel and decides who to eat next. He never liked Carlos either, so he slices him open. By now the episode is almost at an end, and the video begins to flicker as Arnold breathes for oxygen. You knew Arnold begins to cry. The animation gets choppy at this point. Two different shots are seen. In one, the school bus collides with the sun. In the second one, Arnold continues to eat every student left. Since the time lapse, you can only see the bodies and the bones begin to pile up. He doesn't eat Janet, his cousin, so he ultimately cuts him to himself, ending his life. The film begins to end before a Russian text appears, translating into, what happened to Janet? And then nothing else, the ship goes into a black hole, ending with no credits. I cannot figure out what happened to Janet, but the only real clue is, I suppose, is in the animation itself.